back on the record. People versus Karen. 21 15 06 FY. Uh, Megan Matthew Shutter appearing on behalf of the people. If it please the court, attorney Sharon Jones, appearing number 57, 113 on behalf of the defendant, Mr. Paragon, who appears by Zoom. Good morning, Mr. Paragon. Good morning, Your Honor. Any preliminary matters? None, Your Honor. All right, please call your first witness. Thank you. Okay. How many, is it more than just one witness? Well, I do have my officer in charge here. I'd ask you to call me. Okay, we'll make an exception for the officer in charge. And then any other witnesses who are not testifying immediately, we can put you, we'll have you step out in the hallway or we'll put you in a breakout room. I assume that the individual that's on the screen is your witness. It is. Thank you, Your Honor. Go ahead. People would call Alexis Hill. Ms. Hill, will you identify yourself for the record? Alexis here. Ms. Hill, let me swear you in. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? Yes. Okay, thank you. You can put your hand down. You're a witness. Good morning. Ms. Hill, we had an opportunity to speak earlier this morning. Is that correct? Yes. You indicated to me at that time that you really did not want to go forward with this matter. You want to testify. Is that correct? Yes. And in fact, the only reason you are is because you were subpoenaed and you were told that you had to come to court via Zoom. Is that correct? Yes. There is people who move to make Ms. Hill an adverse witness. Any objections? No, Your Honor. Ms. Hill? Yes. You had been in a dating relationship with Mr. Karasan. Is that correct? Particularly in November, December of 2021. And you see him on the screen today, don't you, right there in the... Do you see Mr. Karasan on the screen today? No. Move your camera over. I just see the courtroom. Okay, like expand so that it shows everything. Mr. Karasan, can you say your name? James Karasan. Oh. Is there a screen? I don't see him. He's on your phone to the left. Are you on a phone? Yes. Slide it to the left. Okay. Do you see him? Yes. And can you tell me what kind of shirt he has on? A white button up. Your Honor, I have the record reflect that Ms. Hill has identified the defendant. Now, Ms. Karasan, I'm going to take your attention back to the 19th of November, 2021, about 10 to 10. You and Ms. Hill were at the location of 265... That's kind of backwards. Pardon me? You said you and Mr. Hill. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. You and Mr. Karasan were at the location of 26115 Princeton in the city of Inkster. Isn't that correct? Yes. And you and Mr. Karasan had been having an argument at some point. Isn't that correct, that evening? Yes. And Mr. Karasan, during that argument, had grabbed you by the throat. Your Honor, I would object to that characterization, the extent of how we were questioning. Well, she's an adverse witness. You agreed to let her be an adverse witness. She can ask any questions. Go ahead. And during this argument with Mr. Karasan, he grabbed you by the throat, and he interfered with your ability to breathe, didn't he? And what day was this? Because the day that he actually went, no, he did not interfere with my ability to breathe. It was only for about not long at all, like three seconds. Now, 
you're you're indicating there's two separate occasions, weren't there? Yes. And they were about one was on the second of December, and that's the when you indicated that I object again. This is basically testifying for the witness. Well, I didn't even hear the question yet. What's the question? When you're referring to the incident, you're, there's there were two separate incidents, isn't that correct? Correct. All right. And the second incident, which occurred in December, which is not a matter, it's not up today. That is the incident where when he choked you, it was only for about five seconds and you were pretty much able to breathe. Isn't that correct? It happened how I just said it happened. It wasn't really that bad. That's why I'm not understanding. The night that he went to jail, that was like. Wait, wait Ms. Hill, this is unfortunately at this point, see, during this period, you're asked questions and you just answer those questions, okay? It's not a discussion. I would, I would object again. Um, she answered the question that was asked. No, no, she didn't. She was starting to talk and give a narrative. So I, I am going to ask Ms. Hill if you could just answer the questions that are asked. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Go ahead. All right. So, Ms. Hill, I'm going to take you back to the incident on the 19th, the first one, not the second time, but the first one. Do you recall that one? I'm trying to. The one what? In, in November. When you were having an argument at your home at 26115 Princeton. Do you recall? Every incident was because of an argument. So just because you say it was an argument that they know I don't recall and also um, I have a brain tumor. Well, they're still trying to see if it's a brain tumor or a brain gland. So I really, I need more. Like, I can't remember exactly what day, what incident okay. happened. I'll be happy to help you uh, remember those, okay? So you indicated on the 19th when the police responded to your home at about 9 49 that Mr. Parazon had asked you earlier that day to borrow your vehicle despite having a drive a suspended driving space. Yes, I remember. Okay. And then you had asked him uh, to stop at two locations, but he didn't do so. Do you recall that? He wanted yes. some food or yeah. And then when he arrived home. You guys got an argument ensued, and um, you had told him a couple of times to shut up, and that made him get angry. Do you remember that? Yes. All right, and then Mr. Pearson, during the course of that, of, of that argument, when the word shut up was used multiple times, he ran upstairs and grabbed you by the throat and strangled you using two hands and said you couldn't breathe. Do you recall that? I didn't say that I lost conscience when he told me. Consciousness. I said that it interfered with your ability to breathe. Isn't that correct? That's about yes. 60. Okay. And then um, you also indicated to the officers that um, this had been a reoccurring problem with Mr. Parazon. Do you recall that? I recall the officers and the whole process telling me that it's the ongoing situation. I recall saying that he need help. He's not really violent. He's suicidal. It's a lot going on with him and he, I'm not fearing for my life. I don't think that he would actually beat me up or anything. I was in a domestic violence relationship before right. him. So I know the difference. I don't, I'm just it's like you're, you. I'm getting, it's like you're testifying for, for me at this point. I might well, as well be on the stand testifying. I'm just trying to go through what you told the police on the 19th. 
That's all. Let's just deal with You're that. You're going through every... Ms. Hill, are you able to answer the questions that are asked? I am answering the questions. No, you're not. You're, you're engaging in dialogue. I, I, I'm answering the questions and I asked the question. I, I'm telling you, <laughs> you're going to answer the question that's asked. Otherwise, I send somebody to come pick you up and you can just remain in custody until you can answer the questions that are asked. I just said I will answer the question. Like, how many times do I, I need to say it? I said yes. And go get her. I'm done. Where, go get her. Go get her. I'll sign a detainer. Thank you. Back on the record, this is uh, People versus Parazon. Let's do the felony matter first. Is 21-1506-FY. Good morning. Good afternoon, Your Honor. I am Nancy Shapiro on behalf of the people. We could speak with Attorney Sharon Jones, number 57113, on behalf of the Parazon, is present by Zoom. Uh, How are we proceeding? Your Honor, we have had an opportunity to have a conversation among both counsel. Um, Mr. Jadal and Ms. Jones and myself regarding Mr. Parazon. As the court's aware, Mr. Parazon had a felony file in which he was charged with assaults intended to break bodily harm and count to domestic violence. That date of that offense was on the 19th of November, 2021, as well as a misdemeanor file with the same victim um, he was charged with domestic violence. The date of that offense is 12 2 2021. As part of a global resolution, the people have agreed, Your Honor, to dismiss count one, the assault and test the great bodily harm on the felony file. Mr. Pearson would plead guilty to a domestic violence, and the people would not have an objection to that plea being taken on 769. Two year probationary period. Additionally, as part of the plea, Mr. Pearson then also plead on the misdemeanor file to the added count two of assault and battery. And again, the people would agree to, to um, have that plea taken under 771, the two year probationary period to run concurrent. Your Honor, it appears from what I was able to decipher from this hill in previous conversations prior to her testimony or attempted testimony, she was most concerned with the fact that Mr. Pearson did seem to suffer from some mental illness and was unable to obtain services for that. As part of the probation, the people would be requesting, Your Honor, in addition to anger management and domestic violence counseling, that he have a psychological evaluation and full compliance with any treatment and or medications prescribed. Is that your understanding, Ms. Jones? That's correct, Your Honor. And on, on my case, we'd be asking for 769.4a. And um, my understanding is that on the other case, 771.1 um, um, is being Mr. Parazon, you heard everything that was just said on the record? Yes, Your Honor. You understand if the court takes your plea, you won't have a trial of any kind. Is that okay with you? Correct. All right, Mr. Parazon, if you please, sir, raise your right hand. I'm going to swear you in. Do you solemnly swear from the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? Yes. Yeah. You can put your hand down, sir. Uh, on November 19, 2021, did you uh, assault or did you assault um, 
Miss Alexis Hill, an individual with whom you had a dating relationship? Yes. And then on December 2nd, 2021, did you assault Alexis Hill? And uh, yes, Alexis Hill. I'll strike you. Yes. Okay, there you go. 40 satisfied. Satisfied, Your Honor. All right. Now, with regard to sentencing, are you asking for immediate sentencing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I am considering the, I don't know if either of you are familiar with the mental health court program operating out of the 29th district court, which is in Wayne. I do know that that's an intensive program and they do a real, real good job with providing defendants with the mental health uh, evaluation and support that they need to move on and be successful in life. That sounds wonderful to me. Um, do you want to talk with them about it or? Because well, Your Honor, I... I'm sorry, Your Honor, if I could interrupt briefly. I've had a chance to talk with Mr. Perizon, and he's explained to me that as soon as this Friday, he is seeing a, uh, a counselor and a therapist uh, uh, specifically for his depression issues, uh, that he's already taken the initiative to make sure that he sees that independent of the court's uh, uh, probationary uh, sentence. Good. Uh, Mr. Perizon, I want you to be as, as well as you possibly can. Be. So let's, I, I don't want to we might end up overlapping and uh but whatever evaluation you get from your counseling uh whatever you're told to do just make sure you keep your paperwork and then i'd like you to just undergo an evaluation through the mental health court and uh, sometimes they can work together with your treating physician and put you on a plan a plan that you can uh, successfully complete we want to work with you and get you as healthy as possible do you understand that? Yes. Okay. So what generally happens is um, you, you'll be set up with an evaluation with one of their clinicians. So we need his phone number. Mr. Paris, I'm, uh, does your attorney have a good phone number for you? Yes. Oh, I don't want you to put that on YouTube. We're going to get your attorney's phone number. And then uh, uh, someone will contact you from that program and set up just an, an evaluation and see okay. if that's a good fit for you. If it is not a good fit, then you can come back and see me and we will go with uh, what you're doing with your personal counseling. It just requires us to do more follow-up if that's the route you want to go. The mental health program will do all of that coordination for you. So okay. uh, any questions about any of that, sir? No. Um, when I was talking to Mr. Jadala, Jadala, yes. no, he said once the program's complete, it will be able to come off my record. I just wanted to clarify that. Yes. You successfully complete all the terms of the uh, mental health treatment and get healthy and feeling good. And then I would be happy to dismiss the matters from your record. Okay. Now, it's and your Honor, I've explained. I've explained to him that both matters are going to run concurrent together, and so they, they if he success, if he's successful in both, they will both simultaneously come off his record. Yep. Uh, and your Honor, I would just ask that perhaps that no contact order continues. Okay. It seems like it might be best for all concerned. What's just that, Mr. Perez? I'm being real honest with me. Are you? Is it your intention to continue your relationship with Miss Hill? Well, we were engaged for two years, so I, okay. I did because, like, I was the help she had. Like, she didn't have anybody else. Like, I was the one that took care of all the bills at the house with her having a brain tumor and everything. But since you told me not to have no contact with her since December 2nd when I came there and seen you, well, I think I came to court December 4th. Mm -hmm. I haven't had no contact with her since then. But... Mm -hmm. There, it like I did want to continue my relationship with her. See, I, I don't want to order you to do something that you won't be successful with. Here's what I am going to order um, no assaultive contact, meaning don't fight her, don't put okay. your hands on, don't put your hands on her in any way other than to show love. Okay, is that cool? Well, some people interpret, well, you know what I mean, yes. Know what I mean? I gotta think of a better way to say that, Mr. Perizan. I, I, I just, I'm concerned about. Miss Hill was a little difficult. I'm concerned about you. 
Uh, we have our ups and downs, like, but, but you know, she been through a lot in her childhood. Like, we both been through more than what yeah. some kids should have went through. Like being in the DHS system and all, yeah. like you know, all everything in that area. Would Would you benefit from maybe some couples counseling? Yes, we can do that. If you know, that's if she still want to continue the relationship with me, though. I don't know where she's at with it, like because I haven't had contact with her. Yeah. Why don't you uh, give her a call? Okay. I'll wait. Just go ahead. See, see what she wants. Okay. I'll try to call her off. Let me call her off. I'll call her off one of the other phones close by. No. Is her number the same? I don't know. If she, because, I mean, you know, if she says she wants to have contact with you, then I'll leave it alone and you guys can just have No answer? No answer. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Parazon, we're in yes. touch with you. She's calling. Out. She's calling back. Okay. Go ahead. You put her on speaker. Okay. Hello. Hello. Can you hear her, Judge? Yeah. Hello. Alexis. The judge wants to know if you're still interested in having a dating relationship with me. And do you want to get counseling or do you want to just go about our relationship? Yes, I want to continue the relationship. She said, were you able to hear me, Johnson? She said, yes, she wants to continue that relationship. Correct. Okay. And, uh, but, if, but she said she wants me to get help, that I need help. Okay. Does she have any objection to getting a little help herself? She said, do you have any objection to getting any help yourself? Huh? She said, do you have any objections in getting any help yourself? Um, no, I would take I feel like any human can get any help. I would take any help. Okay. Okay, so here's what I'll do, Mr. Perez. I will lift the no contact order so that you can have contact. Okay. I simply Thank encourage you. you let's, let's get you on, on, on the path first, and then we'll add Ms. Okay. start to okay. a little bit better. Let's just focus on Actually, you. Do I need to go to the police station or something? She said, do she need to go to to the police station or anything? No, we came by her house. She was gone. We came to give her a ride. Right. I left and my neighbor told me, I left and I came back and my neighbor told me that it was a cop car outside and they was looking at my car. So I'm wondering, <laughs> should, do y'all need me to come up there? Because I'm not trying to have a warrant for not being at the house. Or could she just apologize over the phone for her actions or anything? I want the two of you to have a successful relationship. Okay. So Thank you. you. you apology, it kind of okay. And I'm going to, I want to apologize anyway. I just, like, I was getting attacked. I felt like mm -hmm. I was getting attacked and I felt like we, as, you know, the courtroom, it should be as in helping us and not only just a punishment. So uh, let me just, okay. you can explain this. Mr. Parazon, my commitment is to you and your constitutional rights. I'm, I have to protect right. you. And yeah. so that, that is my primary concern. So if she felt attacked in that process, it she wasn't was. to, it was to was. make sure constitutional rights are protected. Do you understand that? Yeah, I did with everything you have said. Okay. That's all my focus I'm is. To you I, later. Can't, I can't be, yeah, you can hang up. I, I, I can't. Okay, I'll call you back. I can't focus on everybody else. And your All right. Are the 
in, in this room. And so um, I wish you all the best with your relationship. I would simply Thank caution you. you, be be thoughtful. Be okay. very thoughtful in who you partner with. It, it can affect your life. Okay. And also, I had asked Mr. Jadala. Hold on, will the tether? Hold on, just one second. Yes, sir. Okay, I'll put it on. Mr. Parison, you had a question, sir? We were just well, going to ask for the removal of the tether, Your Honor. He's on tether and oh, since he's been yeah, sentenced. Yeah, it's off. Yep. Thank you. So he's going to need a um, order. Mr. Parison, why don't you come by? Can you come by the court uh, tomorrow and pick up that order? Yes. So get your tether removed. Yes. You'll just come to the front, front counter. Okay. And it'll be waiting for you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All the best to you, sir. Okay. Thank you. And now, would they, you said they would contact me with the probation and everything? Yeah. With the programming? Okay. Thank yep. you. Yep. Got a number for you, and we'll follow up. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Thank Parasite, you, Mr. If you have any questions, just call us or come up here. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Absolutely. Ms. Matthews. That's it.